Welcome to One on One on God 101. I'm your host, Julie Chen Moonvez. Our guest today is Josh Martinez, who won Big Brother. What was it? Big Brother 19, six years ago, Josh? It's been six years, Julie. That's crazy. Yeah. We have a lot to catch up on. We do. But first, God. I see you're actually, if you move a little bit, it's, I saw earlier you're wearing oh cross. Gosh. Yeah. Did you grow up having God in your heart and in your life? I did. So I grew up, um, my mom, I call her like my living angel. I grew up in a Christian household um, in Jersey. We very close with my family. So um, every Sunday we would have family Sundays and it was, we would go to church in the morning and then we would go to Sunday dinner at either one of my aunt's house or my mom's house. Um, so yeah, I grew up, I wouldn't say religious, more spiritual. Um, my mom made it, you know, very adamant that we had to have a connection with God. And then I think as I grew older and I became the man that I am, I built that relationship and that connection with God and just grew in my faith um, through my own experiences. So I kind of, you know, a lot of people may not know this, but I would say I'm, I'm a very spiritual person because throughout my journey, my strength has been my faith and my connection with God. So, yeah. I love that you described it as, you know, it wasn't so religious, it was spiritual because yeah. what a lot of people don't realize is that when you say, you know, oh, he or she's so religious or religion is about rules and ticking off boxes. What you're describing is what I believe the Lord wants, which is a personal relationship with each and every single one of us. Your okay. relationship with the Lord is going to look different than mine and his and hers and everyone else's. And it sounds like mm -hmm. you understood that from from early on. Is that right? <laughs> Yeah, I did. I think that, um, you know, I grew up with the Bible and all that, but I think as I grew older, um, you know, I take from the Bible psalms and stories and just things that I connect with and that help me within my life and my experience. Um, and, you know, the blessing that I had was that my parents never really forced this religion on us. It was more of just like, you know, always wake up in gratitude, always stay connected with God. If you're going through something, I'm probably praying three, four times throughout the day. Like, if you see me quiet, I'm in prayer. Uh, um, yeah, so I think it's just more important to me is about having a connection. And I think, you know, religion, while it's done so much good, it has caused a bit of divide between people, but it's all the same message. And it's just having a relationship with God and spreading love. Um, and yeah, just sharing love with the world, I guess. And I think that that's something that um, I learned from my parents and from my faith. Yeah. I love it. That's what it's about. Yeah. Spreading love. Yeah. God yeah. is love. Love God first and love one another. Amen. That's yeah. Everyone. So talk to me about that. You say, if I see you um, in silence three or four times in a day, you're probably praying. Talk to me about your prayer life. When are yeah. you praying? Like when you're in gratitude or need or all of it, all of the above all the time all the time um you know i think like i said i believe that god is just everywhere it's just a divine energy you can tap into i think that it's you know important for me um i think i wake up as soon as i open my eyes i say thank you god for a beautiful blessed day and i go into like a list of gratitude and that no matter what i'm going through puts me in a good state of mind makes me put puts me in a positive space um, and I think, you know, gratitude for me is huge and, and giving thanks to God for all of my blessings. I mean, even this moment talking to you, I'm extremely grateful. Um, but even during the hard times, I think that's when I really, you know, build my connection with God. I went through, um, we don't even need to go through the, uh, get into that. We'll be here all day, Julie. But um, I went through some tough times like we all do. Um, being a first generation, I saw my family struggle financially a lot. And in those moments, we didn't have anything but God. And, you know, in those dark moments, I turned to God and I turned to prayer and I prayed for miracles. And that's exactly what happened in my life. I think even talking here with you, big brother happening in my life, all those things, I think it was God, God's doing. Um, and I think my faith not being wavered or me not running away from my faith during those hardships that I went through is why I've been so blessed and fortunate and um yeah so lucky I feel that was no deep but <laughs> no. I don't yeah. believe there's such thing as luck yeah it's, it's either God ordains it or allows it it's a blessing luck I agree I always try and 
I try to not say that word anymore. Instead of lucky, blessed. Uh, yeah. What was your prayer life like in the Big Brother house six years ago? Wow. So um, it was, you know, it was wild. I was so young. When I look back at my experience on Big Brother, I was 23. I was, I was a kid, basically a big kid. Um, but I constantly prayed. I, you know, I, I went through a hard time in there. There was moments where, you know, it was really tough. But um, I think one thing that I look back on that wasn't really shown on the show was how a lot of us in the house did have a good relationship with God. Even the people that I didn't, um, you know, like for instance, Cody, me and Cody spoke very little words. And most of the words that we spoke about were about God in the Bible. And that was never shown. Um, and that was like a connection that we had because um, we had one Bible in the house. I remember we had one Bible and we all shared it. And uh, the only time me and him communicated was like, hey, can I get the Bible? What Psalm are you reading? And that was our exchange. Um, but yeah, we were always um, in prayer and I was always reading Psalm 23, Psalm 91 for strength and just like protection um, and just giving God thanks. I think that was, a, I was, it was like a euphoric feeling of gratitude that I had in that house because like this dream had come true for me. Um, so I was always just in this sense of just like feeling extremely blessed. And I was just giving God thanks every single second. Even when we would speak to you on the screen, I was like, God, like what is going on? You know, I would freak out. But um, yeah, it was such a dream come true. And I think, and I give God all the glory for that experience because it completely changed my life. And I don't think if it wasn't for God making that miracle happen, I don't know where I would be right now at 29 years old, you know? <laughs> Psalm 23 and Psalm 91. Yeah. Why those two? What does Psalm um, 91 say? And uh, remind me, because my brain is north of 50. I feel like Psalm 23 is so famous, but I can't recite yeah. any of it right now. Yeah. So um, I want to say Psalm 91. I kind of know it by heart. So it's oh, um, I he, who, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Um, I would refuge and now I'm a little lost, but it starts like that. Um, but for me, it's just my mom always, those were like two that stuck. It was Psalm 23, Psalm 91, um, 27, but those were two that I really gravitated towards. And I just, no matter what I was going through, I just found strength in that passage. Like it's, I, I don't know how to explain it, but I would just, if I was going through anxiety or if I was going through, um, you know, whatever fears, you know, your mind plays games with you. So especially in that house, there was a lot of like things that were out of my control. I would literally read the Psalm and I would feel this peace inside of me or just this calmness. Like I knew I was good or like God's got me, you know? Um, it's cr I don't know how to explain it, but I just find, and even till this day, I wake up sometimes and I read those, those Psalms and I just find, I feel connected to them and they just give me so much strength and just peace of mind. So, yeah. I was going to grab my Bible right here and start looking. And then I realized then I need my reading glasses. But I think, you know what? Anyone who's listening, go look up Psalm 23. So good, yeah. And 91. And you mentioned a third one. And, um, um, and 27. And Psalm 27. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you brought up Cody because Cody, um, and that because it wasn't shown, that you and Cody were, you know, both have a uh, deep love for God and God's word. Uh, Cody was voted favorite uh, America's favorite house guest. Yep. And God also blessed him with meeting Jessica in yep. the house. Yep. Who now they're married and they have a family. So Very beautiful babies. Yeah. Do you, who do you keep in touch with? If anyone from the, that your season or who'd you meet after yep. from other seasons? Yeah. So, I mean, I think I'm pretty, um, you know, I have strong connections in the big brother family, as we say, um, from my season, I stayed in Paul and Christmas are like family. Um, I just saw both Paul. of them during the winter. Paul. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad you mentioned yeah. Paul because we saw you were tight with Christmas Abbott in the house mm -hmm. who also, didn't she get married to Memphis? She's married to Memphis now. Yeah. She had a baby boy and they, um, they live here in Fort Lauderdale. So they live a really good, happy life. Yeah. I always say we have more marriages on Big Brother than the yeah. Bachelor. Uh, 100 percent Yeah. I don't even know that's true. Um, because Paul, it was down to you and Paul in the final two. And in season 19, when you won, that was the second year in a row that Paul played, and you're still friends today. Because yeah. 
because the finale was a little bit tense. Oh yeah, it, I mean, it was tough, and I'm his biggest. I'm Paul's biggest fan. I, you know, I think he does deserve the win. I hope to God one day he gets the chance to go back. Um, but yeah, we have a great friendship. He's family to me. Those two will forever be family, and. I will always have so much love for them. I don't think, Julie, unless you've been in that experience or in that house, I don't think anyone understands the bond you uh, form. But not only them, for all of my castmates, Jess, Cody, all of them, I have so much love for them. And to see their success and what they've done with their lives and just to see everybody so happy, I'm genuinely so happy to see how everything's turned out for everyone because um, they will always have a soft spot in my heart. I would always be rooting for every single one of them to just see see their wins and their accomplishments accomplishments is um yeah a huge blessing so yeah i'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people um who look the majority of us have not been a big brother house guest and it's so easy to sit at home and to sit or stand in judgment and when you see the fights you take someone's side but what people may or may not know um is that most of you if not all of you once you leave the house you are bonded and any differences you had in the house just as the past like oh yeah that's friends afterwards who were you know like enemies in the house yeah i mean the house is kind of set up for that right <laughs> like it's you can't um it, it's tough because you can't really run away like if i had a, an argument with somebody in real life i'm going about my life going about my business and there you can't like you go grab coffee. We're stuck in the kitchen together. So it's it's tough. But you like you said, you you share this unique experience and you share this journey that nobody's going to understand. And I think for everybody that ends up on Big Brother, no matter if you're gone first or gone or you win, it's such a life changing experience. You learn so much about yourself. You're able to grow throughout the experience and you're able to connect with people like from different walks of life that, you know, you're able to take something from them. Like I would have never known. Kevin from Boston, this, you know, 50 year old or Jason, this cowboy, you know, we're just different people from all different walks of life. But, um, you know, I was able to learn and grow and being so young in there, I was able to take something from every single one of them. And I'm just so eternally grateful for that experience. I can't say it enough, but yet yeah, it's, I'm so blessed that I was just to be part of big brother. Before taxes, you want a half million dollars. What did you do with yeah. it? What did you do with your money? Okay. So, Oh, Julie. Um, so I'll be honest, I still have some of the money left. I was very, um, before I walked into the house, I had my car repoed. I had $600 to my name and I had just graduated college. So lost in life. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. Um, and you could just imagine that pressure of like, you know, I'm a first generation. So my parents are like, what are you going to do? You need to figure it out. Um, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to follow my dream of Big Brother. And I win. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I invested. So to answer your question, I bought two rental properties. I have some of the money saved and I did enjoy it. I helped my parents with some debt. I, um, you know, I traveled a bit and I was able to set myself up, myself up financially to where like I'm in a good place. Thank God. Um but, you know, I got to win another half a mil because now I got to take care of my parents. So <laughs> this first generation, were they from Cuba? Yeah, my parents are both from Cuba. Yeah. And so that means you would be willing to do Big Brother again since you said you want to win another. Uh, no, it's 750 now. So it's I know. tempting. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I that. would. I would. Only <laughs> All right. We have less than a minute left. Um do you want to end us in prayer and this episode in prayer, pray for the world? Am I putting yeah, you on the spot? A little bit, but um, I think I can, I can do it. No pressure. How about a 20 second prayer for anyone listening right now? Uh, let's do it. Can you, you want to start it? No, you got to do it. We have 20 <laughs> okay. seconds left. Okay. I just want to say heavenly father, thank you so much for this blessing. Letting me connect with Julie and with, all this audience. I want to send so much love and light to every single person listening. Anyone that feels lost um, or, you know, going through a hard time, I send them your peace, your love, and your divine energy. And I'm just so eternally grateful for all the blessings in this beautiful life. In God's name, amen. Amen. Huh? Bless you, Josh. Amazing. <laughs> God bless you, Julie. God, yeah. God bless. <laughs>